This is an example of calculating the hydrostatic forces on a curved gate. And I've shown the gate here over on the right. What we're considering is a gate that has a circular profile with a radius of 6 meters. And the gate goes from A to B. The water is on the left. And on the right, we have nothing. We have air. And you can see the free surface up here. And what we're asked to do is calculate the total hydrostatic force on the gate per meter of depth into the page and find the line of action for a gate that has a radius of curvature of 6 meters. So what we're going to do with these kinds of problems is always start with a free body diagram. So I'm going to call that F, B, D. So I'm going to draw the water adjacent to the gate. So this water here and I'm going to draw a free body diagram for it. So here's our our little section of water. What I've done is I'm going to call, of course, this is point A up here, and this is point B down here. I'm going to call this point D. And for the surface AD, we would have a hydrostatic force here, FH. And of course, there'd be the reaction of the gate because our forces have to sum to zero for uh, static equilibrium. On this surface DB, we would have a, a vertical pressure force. I'm just going to call that force F1. And of course, this whole sh shaded area of fluid here has a weight acting at its centroid. And I'm going to call that W. So first, we'll calculate the horizontal force, the force that's on this surface here, AD. So AD is a projection of the curved gate into the vertical plane. And we're asked to consider a unit depth. So it has a shape this surface going from D to A would have a width of 1 meter and a height of 6 meters. Because this is a radius, so this height here is also 6 meters. Now we know for that plane surface, it's very straightforward, the, the FH, the horizontal hydrostatic force is just going to be the gamma of the fluid, the height of the center of gravity of this area here, times that area. So A, I'm going to call it A, A, D. The height of the centroid, or the depth from the free surface, for that surface is just 3 meters. And of course, A, A, D, let's fill that in there, D, is going to be 6 meters times 1 meter, or 6 square meters. Now let me just scroll to the next page to continue with the calculation. So FH equals, I'm going to use a round number, 98 newtons per cubic meter for water. The height of the centroid is 3 meters, and we just calculated the area with 6 square meters. And that works out to 176.4 kilonewtons, and of course the hydrostatic force is, is uh, to the right. Now the vertical force is next. You might wonder why I'm not considering the line of action yet for the horizontal force, because we could easily do that. We know it lies 
below the centroid. But there's a little trick at the end we can do, so we don't need to consider that at the moment. So let's move on to the vertical force. I'm going to scroll back up so we can look at our free body diagram. What we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of the forces in what I'll call the z direction. Let's call that of course, z, the vertical direction. And they must sum to zero because we have static equilibrium. So, oh, I forgot to put on this. There would be, of course, the reaction force, Fv, of the gate. That's the, of course, the water exerts a vertical force on the gate, and the gate pushes back down by Fv. So Fv here has to balance the hydrostatic force on surface BD as well as the uh, we also have the weight to consider so FV just looking at the summation FV is going to be F1 minus W so from some of the forces in the Z direction equals 0 we get that the FV equals F1 Fv equals F1 minus W, where, where F1 is the hydrostatic force on this surface here, Bd. So let's continue to calculate that. So F1 equals gamma H times the surface area BD. Now, I apologize, we keep scrolling back up here. The, this surface of consideration uh, BD is 6 meters in depth. So we have 9800 newtons per cubic meter. It's six meters below the free surface. And again, the area of that surface is a plane horizontal surface in this case, six meters wide by one meter deep. And that works out to 352.8 kilonewtons. And of course, of course, that's going to be an upward force there. Yes, of course, for F1. And now we have to calculate the weight of that odd little shaped piece of uh, of water that's like this. We need to calculate this weight. And we're going to do that by taking 6 by 6 and subtracting out the circle. So the area of this little section of water is going to be 6 times 6 minus the quarter circle, pi r squared divided by 4, where of course r equals 6 meters. And that works out to 7.726 square meters. And so the volume of that is going to be, because it's 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 1 meter one meter deep, the volume is 7.726 meters squared. So now we can we can apply this equation to find the vertical force because we have F1 and we have W. So let me go to a new page and scroll down. Oh, we haven't, sorry, we haven't calculated W yet. So we need to calculate W. W then equals uh, the volume times the gamma of the fluid, which equals 7.726 meters squared times 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. And that works out to be 75.71 kilonewtons. Of course, that's the weight of that fluid element, so it's downwards. So Fv then equals F1 minus W. So that's 352.8 
kilonewtons minus 75.71 kilonewtons and that works out to 277.1 kilonewtons. Next we have to consider, so we've got the horizontal and vertical components. Next we have to consider the line of action. And there's a little trick in this problem because we have a semicircular gate and if you look at the pressure distribution on this gate, every the local pressure always is normal to the gate. So every all the local pressure passes through the center of curvature, which is point C. So because the local pressure distribution passes through point C, uh, the resultant must pass through point C. So we can we can just we know that this is FH and this is FV and we can add them up in a vector sense to get the total total force. So the total force F oops so the total force F has to pass through uh, point C and it must equal F H squared plus F V squared square rooted. That works out to be 176.4 squared plus 277.1 squared square root gives you 328 kilonewtons and we can determine this angle in here the angle alpha equals the inverse tan we're talking about opposite over adjacent the opposite is FV over FH and if you take the inverse tan of that you get 57.5 degrees so that's the answer. We've got the total force, we know it passes through point C, and we've got the angle, so we've got the line of action. Now I'll point out that this problem is solved in the problem sets in a slightly different way. Another approach to take is to consider uh, filling this area here with water, and if you did so, it would balance, you know, there'd be no the pressure on both sides of the gates would be the same. And so you, another way to do it is to consider the water up that isn't above the gate, but consider that if it was there, you do a thought experiment, then it would balance it. So you can also calculate the, uh, the forces in the line of action that way. But this gives an alternate approach, and I think using the free body diagram as an approach that works more consistently uh, for midterm exam purposes and final exam purposes. So that completes this example.